You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. And it starts right now. Hello and welcome to The Kylo Show. We are continuing on with our questions. There's just a bunch of them. We've had a bunch of questions, so we are... I've taken just a couple episodes to catch up on the questions, Mm -hmm. but you know, we love the questions. So keep sending us the questions. Best place to do that is Instagram, Danny Silk, Brittany Serple. You got to spell our names right to find us. I think Danny loving on purpose, I think is mine. I'm pretty sure if they just write Danny Silk though, it should come up. Maybe. I've never searched. Is there more Silk? Danny Silk. (laughs) You've never searched yourself. (laughs) What's your phone number? I I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I think you knew. I never called me. I, I feel bad because I don't know um, some of the kids' phone numbers because it's just oh, in yeah. my phone. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I think I could figure out the boys' phone number because they've had them for a long time. Levi's has changed, but I Taylor's. I look it up. My yeah. phone's ever, <laughs> the internet or whatever cell phones go down. Well, I guess it won't matter if the cell phones go down. They won't need you, your number. <laughs> I guess but. I won't. I think when Levi was on the trail, the only number he could remember. Yeah. Was your number and my number, yeah. which I thought was kind of funny that that's it wasn't mom's number, but so I got a. I remember getting a phone call. From Somehow some. Ben and I have the same number mm-hmm. except for the last two numbers, mm-hmm. and even then one of those numbers is the same. Yeah, it's weird. And and you got your phone number back in the nineteen hundreds. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Ben's was later after we got married or close to that. So. Anyways, those are, have nothing to do with questions, but we were just... They're just jabbering. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the... Okay. So the okay. first question I have mm-hmm. um, says, coming from a single person, what are the traits I should have on my checklist, LOL, if I'm looking for a potential spouse when dating? So, you know, the girls do a lot of checklists. I don't know if guys do checklists Mm-mm. like this, Mm-mm. but I don't know. I think every woman I've ever talked to that's dating, single, coming off of a bad relationship or looking for a husband is they're like, okay, what are the things that I'm tr- wanting to make sure that I find? And they vary. You mm-hmm. know, usually it's a, a respectable, godly man that is pursuing. Pursuing is almost always on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind, honoring, um, I mean, sometimes they get down to the, you know, brown eyes, blonde hair. Some people have a type. I don't think I had a type, but Ben. Ben's my type. Mm-hmm. Australian. Aussie. Yeah. I didn't have any of those on my list. Oi, but, oi, oi. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but I did have some things on my list. So what would you say that if you're, if she has a checklist, what what should be, you be looking for? I would start with, uh, he loves Jesus more than me. So we'll never get that confused. He's never going to put me in the God slot. He'll always have a relationship with Jesus that is primary, and then his relationship with me will be secondary. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is a girl and a guy. I, I'm the girl right now, so okay. I'm identifying <laughs> over here. Um, I think that, you know, it's going to be... Um, You know, I'm looking at what kind of a guy do I want to invite into my life? And um, the next would be, can he provide, can he protect, can he connect? I mean, I I need to feel secure in that as a woman. I need to know that, you know, he's going to... He's going to provide for me and our family, and he's you know, you know that's really important to him, and that it's not going to be my job to make sure that he stays motivated or ambitious or um, industrious. You know, I, I, it can't be my job. I I got a job. Um, that he is going to is is willing and able to protect our family. You know, and I'm watching him, and I'm thinking. Does he protect himself? Does he stand up for himself? Does he, does he confront? Does he tell the truth? Uh, and in that, you know, not that he's an aggressive, out of control dog, but is he kind and gentle 
and able to curb all that, you know, so that it's not just butthead, mm. you know. And then can he connect? Can he love? Can he clean up his mess? Can he um, anticipate and is he interested in figuring out who I am and that sort of thing? So, I mean, if, if I'm looking at the guy, mm -hmm. definitely put those on your list. Now, tall, short, wide, <laughs> you know, green, orange, whatever, you know, that none of that really matters. Think about in 50 years, you know, what's this all going to be? What's really going to matter are those first things. I think about um, what I'd add to that list is, you know, those are all kind of, it sounds like um, layers a little bit, you know, the, the for sure, do you love the Lord more than you will ever love me? Um, are you kind? Can you provide? I think the, are you willing to grow? You know, because some of those things come with, oh, I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't realize I needed that. You know, I think when Ben and I were dating, there's lots of things that we learned. Oh, you don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. But can you grow? We Are you willing to grow? I think that's part of the thing for me, whether it's a man or a woman, is their willingness to grow. Um, and, you know, having fun. That's the other big thing I think about is um, and all those other checklists that um, pieces that feel really important. Do I also really enjoy being around you? Do yeah, we have a good time? 100%. That's, yeah. Do that's, we keep laughing? Do we keep, so, you know, I know a couple of people that are married, they're high D personality, married to high D personality. As long as your idea of fun matches up together, because I get around those two and I go, I don't know that so I would have fun right now. It'd yeah. be more stressed As long as out. competition's fun to you, totally. then there you go. As long as this is, yeah. you can call this fun. But um, those are, I, I mean, I would, I think you could, most of those you could translate for a man or a woman, depending on what you're pursuing. Um, but I think that's the, the providing piece is probably the, a little bit different, but someone that's willing to, I mean, I just think about as from the guy's perspective, um, pursuing a woman, what is it that he's looking for? Because mm -hmm. you didn't go through that checklist quite. Yeah. Soon. So if if I'm the guy and I'm looking at the lady, I'm I'm looking at um, uh, you have to you have to think she's beautiful. You know, she has to be beautiful to you. Um, she she has to have a, a purity about her. You know, obviously the um, yeah I, I've made poor choices in my life is different than I um, just. Girls just want to have fun. Like, well, I would just keep looking, guys. You know, because if if you run into uh, that's a problem down the road for you. So she's got to be, you know, beautiful to you. She's got you've got to have respect for her. You've got to feel like she is going to that she respects herself. That she really does. That mm -hmm. that it's not a, a you know, she hasn't bought into some crazy empowerment idea around if you give yourself away that you're somehow powerful like that. That is going to cause a, a truckload of trouble in a little while. She has to respect you, meaning that she has to be willing to um, convey that she trusts you. You're really going to need to feel trusted as a man. You're going to need to feel respected by her. Uh, if she doesn't respect herself or she doesn't respect authority, you know, she's she's going you guys are going to have a tough time. This is not going to be any fun. Mm. So, then at the same time, I'm I'm looking at are you having fun together? Do you enjoy this lady? Is is it uh energizing to be with her? Or is this just you know MMA <laughs> You know, we're just waiting for the next round because that some people call that a relationship, and it's such a drag. It's such a drag to just live in the perpetual state of conflict and and disconnection. I mean that that's not a relationship that you want anywhere, but especially not long term. Mm. So I think you you have to feel like she's beautiful. Uh, you you have to uh, see her 
respect herself, her body. Uh, you you have to feel respected when you're with her. Uh, you you have to f- see her being willing to trust you. Uh, um, and then you have to really enjoy being with her. Yeah, those are probably I put those at the top end. And Jesus, you know. And yes, yeah. <laughs> don't forget him. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. I I agree. I think those are all checklists. I think my like one of the things that probably were negotiable, but I didn't realize it was I wanted someone that had a value and a heart for ministry because I figured that's where my life probably was going to be going. So having someone that wanted to do that with me was important to me. But those are the like, the, like you said, the, some of the layers that you get into. But it helps if you have the same interests and passion and drive, all that stuff. Oh, good. All right. Do you have a question or do you want me to find another one? I wasn't even looking at it, so... <laughs> I can go for one. If you, if, okay, great. Um, covering. What is it? What isn't it? Who covers who? Who covers singles? And what is the responsibility of the covering of the church? And are you automatically under covering or is it asked of? This is like question in within question within question, but it all ties back to covering. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing based throwing the singles in there that might be a single person, don't know for sure, but um, someone's thinking or heard a message about covering and they're like, wait a second, let's what let's heck? peel this sucker apart. Yeah. So how does that how do we peel it apart for them? Uh yeah, I, you know, I would I would uh, identify covering as um, protect you know spiritually protection uh, spiritual protection through relationships. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for whatever reason, this this has turned into control, right? Like, and I, I don't know if it goes past the 1970s of the shepherding movement and all that. I'm not really sure where it all goes back to, but um, when someone treats you like they control you because they're your covering, um, then you're they are misunderstanding covering and eventually you are too because mm. you're being trained in it. But covering has to do with I uh, I pray for you, I I love you, I uh, am cheering you on, encouraging you, I'm exhorting you. Mm. Um, if you scare me, I'm going to let you know i'm gonna i'm gonna you know communicate with you yeah Uh, i don't have any control over you so i don't even know where the illusion of of covering equals control really came from i except that just people spiritually abusing so many yeah so many uh i don't know if it's spiritual people or christian people or religious people or people who think they love you or people that think they're responsible for you somebody somewhere this whole idea that i can <laughs> sure. control you comes comes <laughs> crashing in totally. and it it makes uh being vulnerable really scary mm-hmm. so i i think that your clarity about how powerful you get to be with whoever your covering is 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 everything Mm -hmm. because then you can say no thank you for your covering no thank you (laughs) keep going cover somebody else cover somebody who likes to be treated like that um at the same time you've got to have people in your life that can turn the light red for you Mm -hmm. and not just green light everything for you so if you don't have that kind of respect for somebody, you don't have any covering. So how does covering – so this is an honest question for me. When I think about, um, you know, we're trusted a lot in the relationship sphere mm-hmm. because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so in family coaching, we will get couples that come to us for a premarital assessment. And they're they're basically – they're. We were reviewing an assessment with them. We're, we're giving them our opinion, our view. Often we're praying for them at the end of it or during it. But there's, they're asking for some kind of input to 
should we get married? And it does feel like there's a, I don't, some relationships we go on and continue to meet with them and others, it's, it's a one-time thing. So I don't know that there's, it feels like full covering, but in that moment, I feel like as a leader and someone that's leading in this area, there's like a covering that they're coming to us asking for this wisdom. Mm -hmm. So is, does sometimes covering come in a form of I'm seeking out wisdom that has, you know, revelation influence and is a trusted source like that? Or is sometimes is covering always a deep covenant relationship with somebody? Um, well, I, th I think in that instance, you know, they're like uh, going to an attorney. Okay. You know? And they're asking for professional advice mm -hmm. about a, a area of their life. And so that attorney is covering them in the sense that I know way more about the legality of your situation than you do. And trust me, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it's similar that they're coming to you and they're saying, uh, what do you think? And you're going, well, based on evidence and uh, experience. And what we're seeing, watching, all those I things. Would, I would say this to you. Yeah. But if you don't like that information, you're free to go get another totally. attorney, right? Uh -huh. um, in, in the spiritual covenant type covering, mm -hmm. um, if you're disagreeing with your covering, you have a, you have a, a problem. Mm -hmm. You're like, ooh. Gosh, what am I going to do? Because that person that I said could tell me no just told me no, and I don't like it. Right. What am I going to do? Because I really want this house. Uh -huh. I really want to go hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt with and create horrible economics for me <laughs> in the future. I really want to do this. And they're telling me, don't do it. Yeah. <sighs> You know that that's the kind of stuff that comes up. Yeah. Or I want to leave my spouse. I've had enough, and they're telling me work it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know that that's spiritual covering. That mm -hmm. is really in the big scheme of things. This is why you have these people in your life mm -hmm. is I'm asking for your input on this so-called opportunity I have. What do you think? Yeah. What do you see? And they say, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I think my concern a little bit with um, some of the younger generation I'm encountering is that they treat these influencers of a sphere as that voice of covering mm -hmm. rather than the willingness to do like – the relationally hard of I gave you permission to tell me no and now you're telling me no and I don't like it. And it doesn't it doesn't translate into control and I and I agree with that. But there's this place of when that person that you bring in and that you trust tells you no, can you lean in through that relationship, ask those hard questions and figure out, you know, why would they say no? What is it they're looking for? What are they trying to protect? Like seeking that understanding mm -hmm. and, and the maturity in that place. And this is why I think it's great to have a couple different places of covering where I get to go and be like, okay, I, I trust this person, but I'm I'm not trusting their response or I'm not liking it maybe. Mm -hmm. And then where are other places that I can go and kind of look for all right, I'm clearly just blinded by my own excitement of this rather mm -hmm. than Mm -hmm. willingness to see truth. But it, it does feel like there's this instant gratification where there's no commitment level over mm -hmm. here when I'm seeking out the lawyer, if you acknowledge well, The great thing about covering is that you are you're building layers of consequences into your life before the other co consequences kick on. You know? <laughs> so if you have you know if you have a, 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 a quality group of friends around you, mm -hmm. that's a covering mm -hmm. in a sense. You know, because you say, hey, I met somebody. What do you think? And they all go, he's a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Totally. They go, no, he's not a jerk. He really loves me and he's rich. You're like, um, yeah, but he's a jerk. <laughs> yeah. like, no, he's not a jerk. You just don't. So I start to isolate myself from mm -hmm. my covering. But that was a consequence. I just experienced a consequence of my really great idea. Yeah. And then I didn't accept the feedback. I didn't make it through that level of consequence with my friends by saying, well, what do you mean? Like, well, what would have to change? Hey, would you be willing mm -hmm. to uh, 
build a relationship with this group of people because I really trust these people. No, I don't really want anybody to give me input in my life. And if they don't like me, it's too bad for them. Oh, mm. uh, ooh, ooh, okay, there's another consequence. Yeah. You know, so you're experiencing all these consequences because of this beautiful life that you've constructed around you of quality. Yeah. You're like, I want to keep this quality in my life, and I would like to introduce this opportunity to my life and see what the quality feedback is. Yeah. That's covering. If you're ready for a life-changing transformation, head on over to kylouniversity.com now and start your journey towards a more fulfilling future. Don't miss this incredible opportunity. Your transformation begins at Kylo University. Visit kylouniversity.com today. I, I think that's great clarity too, because that's where that moment of consequence, I think people experience as the um, control mm-hmm. or no one's telling you you can't, but you ask for input and mm-hmm. here it is. Mm-hmm. And so that that the layers of your ability to go through that and stay connected and trust that, you know, before you had this really great opportunity, you would never doubt their feedback, mm-hmm. but all of a sudden you do. Mm-hmm. So, so it's, it's a powerful thing covering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, having people in your life that can tell, you no, you had it when you were a kid, hopefully, you know, you had a parent that was involved and cared and was smart and mm-hmm. mature. And they would say, no, honey, you can't have M&Ms for breakfast. You can't. You can't have M&Ms sure. for dinner. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Wah, wah. You know, and there you go. You're kind of struggling with that covering. But it, it really feels like control when you're little. But if that doesn't mature to where you begin to recognize wisdom, you're not going to appreciate covering at all. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's good. It's good stuff. I like that question, even though it was like four questions in one. Yeah. I, I like how they snuck that in there, but it's it's good. I think we answered it. Yeah. Did you find one yet? You- uh, how do you show acceptance when you disagree? Um, I I I don't know that you can show acceptance when you disagree, except for that I'm going to be present in the conversation and mm-hmm. um, be respectful and loving, and the goal to trying to understand. Um, but I don't know that acceptance ever comes out for me in that. Like if we're talking about some really strong opposing views, like you're trying to convince me to agree with you that abortion's okay. I don't know that I'm ever going to find acceptance in there, mm-hmm. but I will be respectful and be honoring in our conversations as long as it stays that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and do all that I can to be nice while we're talking about it. And, mm-hmm. but I don't, I think that's part that's a little bit hard for me. It's like, I don't know that I'm ever going to find acceptance, especially with a, like an extreme topic like that. Like, I don't, I'm probably not going to ever accept what you're saying as truth, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to bring my, um, judgment and, you know, hurtfulness. Cause I think that you're wrong. Mm-hmm. I think that is what happens a lot is that I so disagree. I feel so violated to my core of what you're saying because it's so far from who I am that I'm now trying to convince you to agree with me. Mm-hmm. I think that's how that goes often is that's usually the way that it goes. But um, I'll stay in a conversation with someone as long as it's respectful. As soon as it starts getting mean, I'm I'm pretty – I'm out. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm high – deep personality. I, I don't – I know myself. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I start to participate, it becomes – hurtful. Mm-hmm. So my way of showing acceptance is I will be, um, I will stay in this conversation um, and show love and seek understanding and until it becomes disrespectful, then I won't be mm-hmm. in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it's challenging and, um, you know, it's, it's wise to Listen, um, you know, there's kind of, there's a difference between your, um, your perspective Mm -hmm. and, uh, your perception. Mm. And, uh, I think if you can just like your perception is pretty much 
how you make a lot of decisions. You know, you're just kind of perceiving, mm-hmm. and you know, you you've kind of in, in internalized uh, uh, things that reinforce what you already believe to be true, and da 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 da. You're kind of on that move, kind of like your. Uh, uh, what do you call it? algorithms on your social oh, media? Sure. You know, they're like yeah. just feeding you what you want to see. Like that's kind of your perceptions sure. of, of things. And then your perspective, I mean, really having perspective has to do kind of with having an out of body experience where you're almost looking at the conversation as an external third party observer. Sure. And you're watching the two of you. And if you can depersonalize a conversation that way with somebody you disagree with, then you have much better empathy, much better... uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Ability to understand or or, seek understanding. Or or so less emotional. Yeah. You know, if you could just dumb down the emotion, (laughs) because when you're speaking out of your perceptions and your experience of life, and you have a bulletproof case for this. Yeah. You know? But when you're trying to actually see somebody else's perspective, I think that is uh, 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 I, I guess I, I just want to say less emotional. It's it's more factual. Like you are paying attention to what their perceptions are, what their experiences are, and you're all you're trying to do is basically identify that you see them, report back that you appreciate them, uh, and 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 it's. And you can be less judgmental. Mm. You know, maybe you can actually be non-judgmental in that case. But if you disagree with somebody and the conversation's goal is agreement, bail. Yeah. Just bail because this this is we're not I'm not gonna get to tell you what I think. You're gonna get all twisted up and hurt that I said something. Because you're not listening, you ne- you're now trying to influence and control my thinking, and I, I'm like, I don't. So I don't get to st- say what I think. You get to say what you think, and you get to just load it up with all your perceptions. But you're you're not seeing a different perspective. Like, okay, all right, okay, huh, uh huh. So we get in that. I'm I'm out. I'm tapping. <laughs> I'm like, okay, done, all done. I think you explained so much better what I usually am thinking, uh-huh. which is all of that. Like, I'm if you're trying to control my <laughs> thought process, then I will not. I'm which tapping. is, it's it's hard to be out. respectful in that space. But you know, I I've been places in ministry where you know someone has a horrible experience, became pregnant, and is trying to tell me why their abortion was okay. And I'm like, you had a traumatic experience. If I can be empathetic to that space, if I can ultimately reveal God's heart and love for you and stay in this place of empathy, because I'm I'm never going to agree, no matter what the case, that that life was worth taking, but I can see the pain. I can hear the pain. I can... I can lean into that space and do a really good job. Mm-hmm. And I that's I mean right now there's lots of talk about all sorts of things that I think scare everybody um our ability to become less emotional uh where we feel attacked or triggered and lean into the can I bring empathy mm-hmm. to this space be, you'd be so much more successful. Absolutely. And 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 empathy's a, a a really good word because I'm trying to get into your experience, but but I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not changing. I'm not, I think it's more important that than what's more important than we agree mm-hmm. is that you experience love. Mm-hmm. You know whether you I, I love you because I'm shutting this conversation down because I am not going to tear up our relationship, or I love you because I I see you, mm-hmm. and and I uh, and God sees you. Like I want you to know in that conversation there, you know that that God sees you in that situation. Mm-hmm. That's really the most important thing is that you experience God's love right there, not my agreement or disagreement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Um, 
how do you navigate the husband father role to provide and also the reality that God is our provider? When I read that or hear that, I think about how there's a partnership that there's there's a there's a full partnership of us with the Lord that we're stewarding what it is that he's called us to do and what he's given us. And it talks about, you know, our roles as husband and wives. And so I, I think that that's the, the beauty of partnership is understanding that, yes, I'm going to go to the Lord, but I'm not going to sit back and be powerless and wait for, you know, my mortgage to come in mm -hmm. because I didn't want to go get a job. Mm -hmm. Um I, I think that there's unless I feel like the Lord, this is a this I actually run into this a lot mm -hmm. um, in coaching where I'll have a, a a wife who's you know whether it's this statement or a different one that the Lord told her husband that he didn't need to go pursue this job yet because God was going to provide, but who but she feels powerless in this because. God told her husband, and what is she supposed to do? But they're, you know, they've got bill after bill that's not being paid. There's no food in the house. There's different experiences where she feels like a powerless victim because the husband used the God told me he's going to provide card. Now, I'm making this an extreme case based off of this question, but these are, whether it's this example or other ones like it, that trump card of um, God will provide so the husband's partnership with the Lord gets a little muddled. Mm -hmm. Please unpack. <laughs> um, well, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out, right? So God, uh, God's got tons of mystery available for all of us to mm -hmm. go find. And in the provision, there's an order to man's creation. Adam is actually, you know, his... his role on the planet was to take care of the garden, tend the garden. That's your job, dude. Just tend, take care of business. That's your job. Uh, the Lord could have just made <laughs> Adam, an irrigation system and they're never doing and a pruning, you know, self-pruning trees. <laughs> he could have just made Adam to have no arms and no legs, just <laughs> ropes, and he was a hammock. And he just laid in in a constant swinging state his whole existence. No, you know, he's got hands and feet and muscles. You know, he's got more muscles than the ladies. So this this is the, the design of man is basically you've been created to work. Go work. Go tend your garden. Tend your field. Take care of business. That's your job. So any guy that's trying to make excuses for not doing that needs a swift kick from another guy. Mm. You know, and, and for sure he needs to hear it from his lady like, no, 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 no. God did not tell you to do nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. you, you got no, you got no evidence. Back to the covering question, you're like, who's covering this situation? <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Nobody's covering that situation. Because yeah. the second that that guy goes and tells the other guys, the other guys don't go, uh-uh. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. Especially after the first month goes in the toilet. Yeah. Like, yeah, Lord didn't tell you that, man. Yeah. Well, no, really. I mean, and plus, you should see how good I'm getting at this video game. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. dude. No, this isn't. This isn't. No, I'm taking I'm a sabbatical. I'm taking a sabbatical. No, no, you are taking a bath. Is what you're doing, <laughs> and you're killing your family. And, and you need to you need yeah. to get out there and get a job. Well, I'm supposed to go to another ministry school. No, no, you need to go get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's what men say to other men. Like, dude, you can tell your wife this stuff and there's not much she can do about it. Any more than you control how much she stuffs in her body and doesn't run it off. You know, you don't get to control that. And she certainly doesn't get to control how hard you go to work for this family. Mm -hmm. So you control that. You go provide for your home. And if if, if the Lord is going to provide you to take three months off. He's not going to starve your family in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. So you get some 
cha-ching from heaven, like that's awesome. Then okay, use it however you want to, but don't put your family in a giant hole and in the name of ministry or whatever you came up with, Mm -hmm. don't make this somebody else's problem. Yeah. That is a yes and amen. Uh, Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Okay. I just saved you 150 bucks coming to see me because just listen to that. (laughs) What about my husband is about to enter back into ministry after six months of punishment slash discipline due to moral failure. I'm experiencing a lot of anxiety because of this. I'm halfway into your book, Unpunishable, and now I'm filled with even more anxiety because I'm seeing the punishment paradigm playing out in my own reality. How can we move forward? Yeah, well, this is part of how, you know, change. Change takes time. Um, The punishment paradigm is deeply rooted in us as human beings. We kind of love it. It, We call it justice. Mm. Like if somebody makes a mistake, um, boom, you, you know, you are guilty. Yeah. Uh, and, and the only way that I can ever feel good about being affected by your mistake is that you suffer. Hmm. And that feels like justice. You know, and that, the problem is, is that's not heaven's justice. Yeah. That, that is not the consequences of our mistakes. The consequences of our mistakes are we are disconnected from the Father. And in repentance, we can go be reconciled and restored. That's the pattern. So... Heaven's justice, so-called, is being reconciled to our Father. Mm. Earth's justice is pain, suffering, punishment. Like, okay, well, you have to just figure out which world you're going to operate in. Well, for the most part, the church operates in the world. And when somebody makes a mistake, especially a leader, you make a mistake, off with your head. Yeah. So, and everybody goes, yay, somebody's protecting us. Like, okay, well, uh, that process is not protecting anybody. Now everybody's afraid of that process being applied to their situation. Mm -hmm. So we just hide even more. So we (laughs) go further into the darkness. Yes. And we. A little uh, bit of sin is the same. uh, No one. We are less accountable than ever, Ever. you know, because I don't want to be seen in the light. Yeah. So that's a confusing part of most of Christian culture. Um, as far as, uh, you know, her hu- uh, what I would be anxious about if I'm this person is, uh, okay, so he, he went to jail for six months. <laughs> He's coming out of church jail. <laughs> and... I don't think he fixed the problem. I think he just served his time. Yeah, this is Ben's story in Unpunishable. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like he had this. That, that's what I'm when I was reading. Ben this, Armstrong. I think, ben Armstrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he had this experience, and then it shows up. How many years later? Like, well, it happened twice prior. Right. Sorry. Twelve years in between. So that so that's the part that I'm thinking about is you this this church potentially doesn't know how to help find the problem, mm-hmm. which is is classic. Like this is because we 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 think that if you serve your time, that is sufficient, and then we let people re-enter into mm-hmm. uh, the vulnerability of spiritual leadership. And they never fix the problem. They never fix the broken spot. So Mm -hmm. they now have got to become a master concealer of their life because they remember the last time they got scourged for letting this thing be seen. Mm. So now if you're going to rise in the ranks of, of leadership in particular, you have to hide your massages and hide your prostitutes and hide your porn problem. And, you have to, and then when people find out about it 20 years later, yeah. you're kind of a big deal somewhere. You're kind of a, you know, you, you got all this going on. And it's so shocking. And it's, um, it's so consistent. And I, I mean, I can't believe I'm still a Christian. Out of all the stuff I know about, you know? 
True. And all the things that you know people people are hiding because they're so afraid of of being seen. And just because you you you, you know your wife got mad and said, "If you don't do something, I'm going to tell everybody," or some of your elders gathered around and said you know we we got a good thing going here we don't want to we don't want to lose this but you got to get some help or whatever however this is tried to be concealed um or it's tried to be addressed because it's been concealed it is super challenging to hold someone accountable that is kind of the reason that the ministry exists mm. You know that's that's the hard part, right? So it's uh, it's not unlike NFL players that you know go to go to jail for domestic violence, and then we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we get you to go through a process that satisfies everyone that wants you to be punished and get you back on that field, right? You know, yeah. so it's it's like that kind of in that, except maybe there's. Uh, less punishment involved with NFL players than there are with Christian leaders. And, and I think sometimes it's not even there. depends on how valuable the player was to whatever they were doing at the church, mm -hmm. how much they want them to get back on the playing field. Yeah. Or how much they just want them to go away so they don't have to deal with something messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and there's there's probably the, the stinky dead cat in the drawer <laughs> is that we can't figure out where the smell's coming from, <laughs> is that... Um, we, if we bring you back, the people now have to deal with their stuff. Mm -hmm. The people now yeah. have to deal with their judgment, their unforgiveness, their fear of being hurt again, their inability to reconcile. I mean, it's nasty. So what we do is we just pluck this guy out of here. We send him to Siberia, mm -hmm. and we put him in a new church, and they love him because he's gifted and anointed, and don't they I. don't know him. And we we get stripped down to the fact that Christians really love and adore and trust leaders they don't know, Ugh. which is why leaders stay hide, hidden in the dark, is if you saw me, you wouldn't love me anymore. You wouldn't trust me anymore. So I do that as long as I possibly can until it all blows sky high because the level at which you caught me was way worse than the level we could have done an intervention and made a major adjustment way back here. I just feel like we need to create a rehab center for pastors. Mm. That Well, none of them would come. No, exactly. <laughs> 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 it would be pointless. It's too scary. That's it's too scary. It's too scary. Oh, so sad. I was talking to one of the girls, either Addie or Delaney, I don't remember. We were talking about how um, a leader's anointing, how it still is very present even if they're in sin. Mm -hmm. And they were confused about that. Like mm -hmm. how come God doesn't just like shut it off you know, and I'm like, well, I think there's moments where that does happen, where you walk out of the favor and it leaves. But, you know, God's designed us to, you know, have these skills, these these talents, and every one of us is so uniquely designed that you know he's he still shows up, even though this person's living in sin, crazy hidden stuff, and they still show up to a, a service, and there's healings, and there's the outpouring of the spirit. And I think it was Lainey because she's in school ministry, but she's like, how do, how come God still shows up? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why there's not a, all of a sudden a banner that goes across the, the sign that says, no. Run away. Yeah, yeah I yeah. don't know, except for, you know, I, I think about, I said, I think about all the people that are in the room that are needing a touch from the Father, that are needing that whether this man has enough integrity or this woman has enough character to do a good job with being a human and you know not entertaining all the other crap, but it's all those other people. God still loves those people, and he still wants to touch those people. That's the only thing I can reconcile in my heart is that he still loves them. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know. Well, the, uh, Romans 11 says that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable, which in essence means that um, God gave, you know, you get a car, you get a car, <laughs> you get a car, and he doesn't, he doesn't take them back. Right. You know, so whatever you do with your car is going to be your responsibility at the end of this story. And, and that's the, the, uh, the kingdom mindset is, oh, well, you'll be answering for the, what you did with that whole deal. Mm. And, and Paul goes on to say that those of us who become teachers are doubly accountable. Oy. Oi, 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 you know. So, so there's so many cars that I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So you were given one talent, you were given three, and you were given five. What did you do with yours? I buried mine. I just buried that sucker. I buried the car. I buried. I dug a hole. I, I buried it. that car because I don't want. And then, and he's in he's in the most trouble. Yeah, that's that's true. You know. So the guy that just buries his talent. And, and does nothing with, with what the Lord has given him is is he's the most severely judged for being a coward, mm. which is kind of interesting that most people think that adultery mm-hmm. is really bad and being a coward is socially acceptable. Like no, they're they're <laughs> equals. They're yeah. equals in the kingdom. You be a coward, boom. This is this is this is that's actually you being mentored by the spirit of fear, mm. and you are a disciple of fear. Like you, whoa, whoa, whoa! You put it like that, right? That's what that's what makes it equal. So, people going out there using their gifts, using their talents, you know, participating in the kingdom of heaven, and jacking the thing up mm-hmm. is is less of a uh, less severe mm. than if you just went and hit it. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think that that's how people view this. People don't. No. No, no. Because we want to hang everyone that... Does anything wrong. Uh-huh. And yet mistakes are part of life, and therefore there is repentance. If, you know, right. if, if you're... If you're actually walking in the fear of the Lord, there is repentance, and we can clean this up. Like Peter, Peter, good <laughs> Lord, Peter is in, I love that they left him in there. You know, he just, how Thank big you. of a mistake can you make to, then to say, I never knew Jesus. <laughs> over and I over and over again. I never <laughs> knew him. Get away from me, you little kid. I never <laughs> knew him. I mean, I don't know how big a hole you could dig yourself, but that's a pretty good one. Yeah. And Jesus cleans it up with, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? It'd be great if it rooster crowed right there. No, we'll never know that. But he didn't go away to pastor Siberia. He didn't have to go do anything. He he got reconnected in a in a rebuke, mm-hmm. and that really is. And and that doesn't show up on Peter's resume anywhere. No. Anywhere. Nowhere. You know. <laughs> and that's that's the challenge for the body of Christ: is will we actually? move together as a unit in the fear of the Lord and do what we have to do to stay connected to our Father. Well, it's a great way to end our questions. There you go. So there you go. All right. Well, thanks for listening, and hopefully um, you had as much fun as we did. <laughs> we'll see you next time on The Kylo Show. Thanks for listening. Never miss an episode of The Kylo Show by subscribing to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. Don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to thekyloshow.com. The Kylo Show is produced by Ali Armading, co-produced by Ashley Beck and Anna Hill, and show promoter Christian Zamora. Don't forget, whole healthy families are going to save the world.